wow, that looked nice. You see, you see that's what's going on now. But you saw how it came in here? That was a great opening. Good morning. It is Saturday. It is chilly, but not that bad. I mean, this jacket, Uniqlo, Japan, bought it on sale. Super warm. I love it. Love it. But um, ironically, my pants are also from Uniqlo, but they're not actually... They're not for this weather. They're more like summertime, I guess. Because they're light, you know? Sweatpants where you don't sweat in them. But, uh, heading out. I mean, if I had a 80 hour drone battery thing, and I could have someone fly it or whatever. But my hands are cold. I don't do gloves. But I do think if I keep walking when I get to my spot, it'll be warm. So. We'll endure, endure. But I just wanted to be put it out, put it out there that I'm cold. People don't like to see people in. Translation. Good morning. It is cold, isn't it? His poop is green. Dogs be telling you all types of shit. Oh yeah, I started, you know, really brushing up on my, um, have a nice day. Wow, what a nice dog. Yeah, I started brushing up on my dogology. A little course I take when I go to bed. Just let it play. I tried a couple times to listen to an audio book as I'm sleeping. I just fall asleep. I... For music, I think it works. I put a loop on and I just let it loop along and I think that kind of seeps into my subconsciousness. Ah, whew, it is cold. So yesterday I came home from work. I was supposed to have a half day, but there was a bunch of stuff to do and I don't like to leave things undone. Well, I don't like to start it and leave it undone. I don't have no problem leaving it till the next day but if I halfway started I want to finish it so I ended up getting out of work regular time and then you know my job has the BS set it is so um the teacher who was chatty patty about the other teacher decided I guess the other teacher's like why don't you come see how I run my class get some ideas so then my teacher is like hey do you want to go to the other class not really because you don't like her but I guess you're going to, to her because shit is where it is at it's one of those questions man you're asking someone do you want to when you do want them to but you're asking as a question as if they could say no of course you can always say no but then it'd be really awkward. Hey, I'm getting married. You want to come to my wedding? Not really. Don't like your husband or wife to be. Don't trust them. Oh, you want to hold my baby? Nope. I don't hold babies. It'd be weird. So anyway, to just go with the flow. I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's go. When? You, when? I was more like when. She's like, do you want to go? Just tell me when. I don't, don't. And she explains that don't explain it just tell me when and where so we go and as i mentioned i in this school i have to do lunch with all the kids so i know the little kids and they know me and i come in they're like good morning mr bailey so cute they're all looking up and smiling and showing how they cut with their scissors so cute he's like you know the kids of course i know the kids y'all teachers don't want to do lunch duty so you put me here and anyway so the teacher first grade teacher and her assistant which happens to be her goddaughter or something their team teaching is basically stand up do that put that on the board like it is not a team it's more of a coaching I, it's very you're not going to be telling me to do shit and then like while she's talking she'll come over like and then the teacher is like i don't know and like, because this like oh like I, 
She got an iron fist. And apparently she got an iron butt. Because when she was stand, like she... Maybe you can get the character of the teacher from this. So I walk in, the teacher sits down, and she's like... All right, the sixth grade teacher that I'm with, she sits down, and the first grade teacher's like, do you want to sit down? I'm like, no, I'll stand. I'll fall asleep. This shit is boring. I ain't doing nothing but watching. So I'm like, I'll stand. She's like, oh, that's why you're so skinny. And she smacks her butt. Check. Smack, smack. And it made a sound. Like she opened palms, smacked her ass. Like two of me could fit in one of her thighs. Like she has that kind of body shape. So she's very uh, intimidating to some, especially if you're little, like the little kids are. So all I was writing in, I was taking my notes like, yeah, because of the age, because of her authoritative style, that's how she manages the class. Where my teacher, sixth grade teacher, she's more of like a buddy. A kid says, oh, it's so cold. And she says, yeah, when I was in uh, Mississippi, like, who cares about your Mississippi? Like, she always tries to want to be like character. Me, I don't tell you shit, even if it's like one to one correlation. But anyway, so then we come back to the classroom, and I'm like, yeah, how about this? Like, no, that won't work for our kids. How about that? No, but what the fuck you want me there for? So then, I mean, she wasn't crying today, and the kids were pretty good today. And, you know, whatever. So then uh, I walk into the, the office to print something, and uh, I see the principal, the one who gave me a hug on Monday. But she didn't even say hello to me, didn't even look at me. She had a thing of donuts in her hand. Didn't even offer me a donut. This is an out of characteristic character for her. She's normally, I walk in and she's like, hey, hey, Mr. Bailey. All loud and shit. But now she doesn't say that. Which again, why pretend to be with me? Fake ass mother. So maybe, maybe she is a fake ass mother. Mother. But um, so then I, uh, and as I'm walking out, she's like, hey, do you want to come to the teacher's meeting? So I don't get a greeting. She just hits me with the, you want to come to the teacher's meeting? I'm like, I don't even work on Monday. She's like, oh. And that's where the problem began for yesterday. The principal of the school doesn't know my schedule. Then another teacher comes in. Oh, we don't work on Monday? And I'm like, nope. She's like, but I thought we did. And I'm like trying to find the email we got a calendar a year calendar that says we don't work of course i want to make a little money but it says we don't work and they just cut our hours so then i walk out and i find the calendar i come back in and i show her it's like oh then uh the day goes on i tell my teacher sixth grade yeah i'm not coming in on Monday. She's like Nobody told me. How was I supposed to know? I'm like, yeah, that's what it is. I don't think I'm gonna make it all the way to where I was going because it seems to be getting colder. Maybe I talk about hot stuff, volcanoes. It's the wind, man. Here, I'm gonna put it somewhere so I can like stand there. Let me find a rock or something. But oh, it's cold. But um, um, um. So I go to lunch and I'm talking to the other teacher who does the job I do. I say, yep, I'm looking forward to my vacation from Monday. And then the other lady comes in. It's like, yep, I'm going to New York on Monday. Then the other lady comes in. They're all ladies. And she's like, well, I'm coming in on Monday because we work. I'm like, we don't work. So then I'm just really frustrated because what kind of job does it know when the people don't work or do work? And everyone's like, no one told me. This doesn't fall on the job of me, 
it's, it's company who hired me to the principal of the school to the teachers who and I just don't like that because it's gonna start to piss me off you don't want to see me when I'm pissed off but it's gonna get me in trouble I'll be like I didn't know I had to work like why are you phone calls if I ain't coming in I ain't coming in so and then I ended up and I was like at least it's Friday and I get to leave at a half day but I ended up staying I come home and I, I want to like just vent to, you know, my dad, like, hey. But my dad is going to say what my dad always says. Because my dad came from the air working in like a, a car factory where they treated you like poop and he made $6 an hour. I get paid four times as much as my dad and they don't treat me a plus or minus but it's a different kind of of stress you know like if you were a salesman selling cars getting commission for like eight million dollars and then your next commission is like three million dollars and you were try, trying to tell that to my dad he would have like a heart attack i never made that but, but, but you're not a salesman you life the circumstances that led you to keep it. So I just sit in there and I'm sulking in the corner trying to scroll through something and get my mind off of it. My dad's like, what's wrong? I said, you know, just work stuff. He's like, back in my... And I was like, I'm seriously going to say, please, not now. I don't want to hear this. Just let me somehow figure it out for myself. So then my dad starts grumbling, back in my day in the background and I'm just... So I go upstairs, I work on this project for uh, the Friday thing, because I was planning on getting home and on half day so I could work on the thing and upload it before the show starts. I ended up uploading it at, uh, the show starts at 5.30, I uploaded at um, 5.45. I mean, it doesn't take me so long to do it, but I, I, I just, just, I don't like my schedule being disrupted because of all this other shit. But anyway, it was great. Um, what the host, he had a baby, and this week's challenge was make a lullaby for his baby. I didn't know if the baby was a girl or boy, and I didn't feel like scrolling through his page, so I just kept it in big. Was just. When a baby is born, a papa is proud like Mufasa holding the child to the crowd. That's a good reason to smile. When you're old enough, I'll teach you how to freestyle. Make a lot of friends with koala. But please, don't eat the eucalyptus leaves because it might make your tummy... Because we use an app called Koala, so I try to throw it in there anytime I rap. And it was well received as always. Oh my gosh, my hands are freezing. And I don't know where I'm gonna put this. Maybe I could put this on the floor. I might do that. Let's see how that works. <laughs> We're gonna have to switch it because the light's all weird. Oh, it is cold here. Let me switch this over. There we go. You're going to sit down too? Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Ah. Whew. I won't know if a bike's coming behind me. This might be the end of me, get hit in the bike, hit by a bike, break my spine, and then I'll be laying on the street by myself as I die, as I hit and run, and they ain't stop. And no one came, except a dumbass cop. I say a dumbass cop, because it's in my dream the last night that I had one where the cop won't watch. Try to introduce me to the life of hard knocks. He hit my knees, but they didn't break. I guess it's a dream. Anyway, so, um, Ah, uh, whoo, man! I used to be a paper boy. 
and in the morning i'd be all like whining it's so cool man i'm 41 now right and i finally got over cold is cold you gotta deal with it growing up i hated the cold and i would let you know my face would be like don't talk to me but i so, um, um, yeah. And another thing that cheered me up was yesterday was the official day of Black Friday for another company. I guess they want to maximize their sales cycle because if they only drop it on Friday, uh, the Black Friday after Thanksgiving, that's one day of sales. But if they kind of do it earlier, they could get more, more bang for their buck. So the company that I, I, I got is one of the first companies I started buying. Um, MSX, for those who know. Soul Samples. Because when I first started... Well, I, 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 I've, I've always used samples. Or at least, was it? I knew about them. But back in the day, samples used to be like... On a CD or DVD. And it would have like a song and it would have all the parts. So you get like 10 songs with all the parts, like a hundred bucks. One of my girlfriends, um, well, only one, but when I was in Japan, we met and I took her to the music store and I showed her the thing I liked and she bought me one and sent it back to Japan for, I think my birthday. Yeah, the one that got away. But uh, but then one day I was like searching and I found like a sample pack, which is just the 10 songs, but just the songs and it's not a hundred bucks. It's like 39, 29.99. And I was just so excited, like, oh my gosh. And then I found other ones that are more geared to, for the 365, you might notice it had like a lo-fi feel because that's the first packs I found. But anyway, and I'm, 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 the plan is just to kind of get the catalog up. So I was doing that yesterday and yeah. And then after I felt better, I went down the stairs to joke around with my dad a little bit. My dad confirmed that he's blind. Like he can't see if he's looking at, like if you're looking at him, if he's looking at something straight, he can't see it. He has to turn to the side to see it. He never told me this. Which, you know, old age, you know. And that's in one eye. I think the other eye is blind. And, uh, look at this segue. Transition. So, this week I've listened to the audiobook of A Death of a Salesman three times. And it it came at such a crucial time because if you don't know the story um the guy's a salesman 60 years old and he has two sons one son is like a, a playboy and the other son is a wanderer um it's said in the 1940s where everyone they call him kid what's going on kid and they say be a pal and they say this which is weird he's like we're gonna take pops to the restaurant and blow him up and blow him down and like blow must be like uh, blow i guess in 1940s they didn't give blow jobs or was it in the vernacular of normals so blow would be like we're gonna cheer him up like yeah we're gonna blow pop like it was really weird but you know time is what it was so um my hands are warming up but the, the concrete's a little cold, but, you know, my butt got a little, uh, as my dad says, I'll smack your butt because it got a little, well, he didn't say cushion and all that, but it's like, anyway, so, um, the, um, so yeah, that's the setting, and the dad, he's a salesman, and he's driving really far, they're, I guess they're in, they're in New York, but he's driving to, like, Maryland and Boston or some shit. He's getting tired. He's 60. And the company that he worked at, the, 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 I guess the owner, the, the, found, the founder died and the son took over. And uh, 
Yeah. So he goes to the boss. He's like, yo, I, I want to work in the area. I don't want to drive any. I don't want to drive so long distance. And the guy's like, but you're the driving guy. You got to do that. He's like, please, I'm tired. And then he kind of has a, a breakdown. And the guy's like, get yourself together, kid. It's like, the guy's older than him. He's like, we don't need you to work here anymore. So he got fired. And then his son that's a wanderer, he came home and his dad's always on him about, did you make money? And I really identify with that because my dad might see me as this wandering character. I was out in Japan. And he's like, I don't know what you're doing out there. I said, I was working. But um, there's a, a scene where the salesman's dad, or brother, he was just like, he, they don't really confirm it or nothing, but the brother is a millionaire, or he's rich. He found gold. No, he found diamonds. So he comes to visit, and he's just like, you could come out there with me to get diamonds. And his brother, the salesman's like, no, I'm okay here. I'm going to take over the company. I'm, I'm building things. And the, the, the brother, older brother's like, can you, what you building there? Can you touch it? Can you feel it? And he's like, yeah, that is true. You can't touch it or feel it. And it just resonates. Like, my resume is a bunch of stuff you can't really touch or feel. I'm smart. Yeah, no one really, not many people would not say I'm not smart, but I don't got a bunch of papers on the wall. And I don't make money directly related to the books I read. Like, in the military, if you get a degree or whatever, you get like, a bump in salary or you get certified and all that shit for me if i get certified or go to berkeley music it doesn't mean i'm gonna sell more beats it doesn't mean i'm gonna get a record deal it just means so i'm in that kind of spot and i can get like a million subscribers tomorrow it doesn't mean i'll get a million dollars like it's the, the correlation is not there i live in that space i'm okay with it because I, I know, I feel that something, I, I, I'm moving towards something. I feel the momentum. But it's a hard, 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 hard. It's an uphill battle when you're trying to explain this to other people who are looking at you like a piece of poop. But, um, but that's how the story is. And the son, the wandering son and the dad are going back and forth. So the son decides to lie to the dad, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to meet this guy, and he's going to let me borrow 20000 I'm going to start my job, or 15000 And the dad's all excited. And when the guy goes, when his son goes to meet the guy, the guy doesn't, it was like 15 years have passed. So, yeah, 15. So same amount of time I was in Japan. Like, it just correlates. Now, mind you, I could find, read most books and make it correlate to whatever I'm doing. That's just how my mind works. But this is just too eerie, you know? 15 years out, came back. So they have lunch with their dad, dinner, where they're supposed to blow their dad down. And um, the, the son decides to tell the dad that he, he's not who his dad thinks he is and he should just stop trying to pressure him. Which is a universal theme. Like how many pops and sons have this. The pop doesn't believe in him. Or they over believe in him. They want him to do great things. And they want him to be better than they were. And it's just like let them be who they want to be. But you don't want your kids to not apply themselves. And my dad said this here and there. But he doesn't. Like he said you know. My son's always on the computer. He has to use his own brain. He has no idea what this brain of mine is doing because I can't, it's not tangible at this moment. And maybe he'll never see the, the, the spoils of my, of my uh, thing. But um, so he, they're trying, he's trying to tell his dad, his dad gets upset and it seemed like his dad punched him. Smack! And then, and then the dad goes into the bathroom and then the two sons leave their dad at the restaurant. Well, the one son who got smacked ran out. And then the other son, the, 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 the playboy, 
because he had two girls. He's like, let's go have fun and paint the town red. And they just left the dad there. Dad comes out like, where's my son? And they're like, oh, they left. And then the third act, they come home and the mom's like, the, 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 the playboy gives the mom flowers. Here you go, mom, put these in your room. They'll be nice. And she's like, she throws them on the ground. He's like, why you do that, mom? I want you to have flowers. And he's like, you're a bum. You're a bum. But it was really powerful. The acting was really great. I want to try the regular audiobook to see if my brain will. It's already tainted since I heard this version. Like, the acting is phenomenal. He's like, you're nothing but a florist. Ph philanthropin bum. And you, did you even check on the old man? And then, um. The old man comes in and finally he's like, I'm not coming back, dad. And he's like, if you don't come back, I hope you burn. And he's like, what do you want from me? He's like, I want you to be something. He's like, dad, I won't be anything. And this hits me. Like as I'm driving, it's just like, he's like, I'm nothing. And he starts crying. And then the dad's like, why are you crying? He's like, cause I'm nothing. He's like, and then the, the the wandering son goes to bed and the dad's like he loves me and that part hits me because since i don't talk i mean i talk but i talk in a way that's me anyway so i've heard a lot people say i didn't think you liked me i thought you hated me like if i hate you i hate you and it'll be a very clear you're a piece of shit of a person and why would I like you? You know what you did. But if there's nothing there, I'm trying to, you know, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything. I'm not trying to rock the boat. To your benefit, you know? And I think I got that from my dad because he said yesterday, you know, I don't bother nobody, even you. Even you. So much subtext in that. Even you. Because my dad, like, Right now, I have in my room, I have one little outlet, which has always only been one little outlet. But my computer is plugged in there and my hard drive is plugged in there and another cord is plugged in there for my phone. So basically, this is my electronics and shit. And my dad's like, it's cold, you need a, a heater. Like, I don't want that heater. We have a little space heater. But if we plug it in, it blows the socket. I don't want to die from a blown socket in electrical fire. And I don't want to wake up with a with my iPhone not charged. I, that's that's what's important to me. I want to be ready to go. If I want to make a video, I want to make sure that shit is on 100%. And we got into an argument when I cause I came home like in December. And we're all use a space heater. It's like I don't want like it makes my the throat dry. Even my mom didn't like the space heater. A lot of people, my sister didn't like the space heater. I can't sit in front of a space heater. So th things like that, we get into these fights, but he, he just doesn't say it to me anymore because he's just trying to keep the peace. And that's my thing. I, I, I don't really go to war with people unless they're antagonizing me. And then it's like, shh, you, you don't know who you're antagonizing. You better go read the manual about Matt. But um, yeah, and then the story ends with um, the the, the salesman killing himself for the insurance money and as I mentioned before my dad his um, he has bad eyesight he can't see and when he gets in the car because the last scene is he gets in the car and then you hear the the acceleration and then the screeching and then the crash and then you hear the mom's no and it just hits me again because every time my dad gets in the car I'm feeling I'm gonna phone call like, my dad's been driving all his life. I'm not really worried about his driving skills, but it's how fast can he react to someone else's bad driving skills? Or will he be able to see it? And it just, it, like, my, when I, oh. And, and, uh, but there's nothing I can do unless I, like, lock him into the, to the chair or blow up the car or throw the keys somewhere. So that book just resonate so now when I'm like feeling like I want to argue or feeling whatever I kind of think of how his name's Willie Willie Loman 
To get old is not easy for anyone. Maybe for some, but not easy for most. You know. My coworker was saying that she was saying that with her dad. Like, I guess that's a thing, you know? Like, at some point, my mind may not be able to rhyme, lime, time, climb, slime, dime, mime, mind, kind. Like, that is just easy for me. But there might come a day where I can't put the words together as fast as that. And that's scary. Really scary. Like, uh, my dad was asking... I feel like I said this, but it's... Then this could be part of it. But I, I'm pretty sure I did. So my dad was asking about a cousin. And... And, um... He couldn't think of the name. And I, I knew who the cousin was. I know what she looks like. I just couldn't think of her name. I, I knew the guy she was dating. I know the child's dad. I know last time she came to the house. I just couldn't. And then I was just like... Good, good, good. So start from A. Annabelle. B. Beatrice. C. And then I just stopped thinking about it. And then it just came back. Bam! Karen! Like Karen! It's just like that. Light bulb. Boom! It's a great feeling. I'm like, Dad, it's Karen. He's like, ah, oh, it's Karen. I can't remember. But... That shit is... That shit is real. It's real scary. Like, I could... You play any of my old songs, I could, um, I could remember. There was a, 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 a guy who hit me up on YouTube. He said, hey, remember that one song? And he, he kind of typed the first lyrics. And I was like, yeah, I remember where I sang it first, because the video he's talking about, the circumstances, the people who were there, the second song that I didn't post, but I fucked it up, because I said something like, and to the women out there, you a hoe. But I want to say, guys are hoes. But I switched it up. It was like a black event. Black event. And uh, everyone was like, ha, 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 And I was like, ha, And I remember setting up my camera because I just got the camera. So I was putting on like 24P and it looked really nice. But it was kind of out of focus because that part was the hardest thing for me with the DSLR. So I remember all that comes back from those two little lines. And then I remember that I had a, a hard drive failure, so I lost the files. And he was like, yo, you got it. And then I just couldn't find it. And then one day I was just going through some old hard drives I have that basically I get a new hard drive copy to the next hard drive, but I don't want to delete the old hard drive just in case. So I found it and I, I, I set it up. And I was like, I got it. And he got it too. It also works against me. Like, if I'm having an argument with someone, like, they say some stupid shit, and I'm like, you said some stupid shit, and they go, no, I didn't. I would never. Like, you did. Call me crazy. And I try, I'm like, hey, hey, why don't we record the conversation? That way we could come back and be like, nobody wants to record the conversation. I'm like, all right, let's write it down. Nobody wants to write it down. Let's take a note. Nobody. Let's get a third person. Nobody, because they're, they're not going to win. Because my mind is sharp. But anyway, we're going to end this on a happy note. Or not a happy note, hopeful note. Although this wasn't sad or anything. Maybe it's sad that I'm sitting on the sidewalk freezing. I don't think that's sad either. And I'm not quoting them. Actually, we can walk. My hands are... I mean, the sun's been up. But, um... Now my leg's falling asleep. <laughs> but, yeah, I got an email yesterday from uh, Fiverr where you could sell your services you could sell anything and um, someone's like hey would you be interested in doing like a 10 minute thing where people ask you questions and you wrap the answers and I'm like shut your m like cause I'm always going on that people don't utilize my skills in the way they should be used. Like, I do that all the time. That's my thing. So I, 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 usually I think about it. Here, let me put a pin on that. So, do you remember this spot right here? This is where I shot the one song. Right here. But, um, 
So I, there's this uh, this um, hip hop thing. It's really interesting. Actually, I don't know if I'm going up there. I'll go this way. All right, it's really interesting. It's um, they take different producers and then they pair them up like a blind date to make a beat collaboration. Interesting concept. So I saw it, put my name on the list, and then the guy's like, yeah, here's the person you're partnered with. So I sent him a very nice email. I said, hey, my name is Matt. We've been partnered together. Um, how do you want to go about this? He responds back, do you rap? Or not even a sentence, just you rap or sing. Now the name that I use on this channel, on that channel is Rhyming on the Beat. And then the videos that are on that channel is a person or most of the time. Sometimes I'm in it, but either I'm in it or on it. But I'm rhyming on the beat. If you rap, you're sing. Not a, hey, my name is so-and-so. Nice to meet you. So yesterday I, I was getting off from work, get to the house, blah, blah, blah. Within 24 hours, he sent a message to the, the, the host or whatever. He's like, I don't want to do it with him anymore. The host emails me back. He said, what happened? I take a screenshot of the, because this is, again, that proof. I'll play the recording. I'll show the video. Because nothing needs to be said. Just look at it. Like, if I'm talking to someone, and you can see them all, like, in my face, and they go, I didn't do anything. But the video clearly shows they're in your face, huffing and puffing. The video could show that if you say, yeah, you were fucked up for that, and they start getting really defensive and start attacking you, the video will show that. Anyway, so I, I send a screenshot, and he's like, wow, that's strange. I'm like, I guess, I don't know. Maybe he was expecting me to answer him within 10 seconds. I mean, I'm used to people, I'll get back to you, and they never get back to me. The last message, I'll get back to you, and they never do. That's me. And I still gotta, because I can't put it on the next person. But it really bothers me if I'm asking you, can you do this, and I'm waiting. Like, I, I just feel every time, but I just gotta believe that you are not that person who left me up, stood, let me stood up before. But I guess this guy had more trauma than that. Anyway, so the guy that was that saying, can I do the freestyle rap answering questions? I emailed him, I replied real quick. I said, oh, thank you, good, thanks. I, I'm, I'm interested, I love to do this. He's like, all right, um, it'll be like 10 to 15 minutes, you'll get paid. I'm like, what? For 10 to 15 minutes? 